What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Smart HVAC Marketing Podcast. This week, we are bringing on a, a good friend of ours who was actually, oh gosh, episode, I don't know, 18, 19, something right. like that. And it's been a while. So it was a good good conversation then and figured it would be, be great to bring him back on. So we're, we're going to chat about a lot of good stuff in this episode, y'all. We're going to talk about community marketing, um, things you should you know ask your agency to hold them accountable, and a lot more. So stay tuned. Welcome to the Smart HVAC Marketing Podcast, the podcast for HVAC contractors who are ready to quit screwing around and begin growing their business. Powered by Rival Digital. On this show, you'll hear from industry leaders and become equipped with the tools and knowledge you need to build a world-class business. Now, here's your host, Eric Thomas. Matt Tyner, how you doing? Doing well. How are you? <laughs> doing doing very well. Yeah. Super excited for this conversation. I know uh, last time you were on the show, we kind of were getting started with it, and it was just like uh, me hustling off interviews in my home office and not a whole lot to it. So really excited to bring you back on because I, I remember we had a really good conversation last time, and uh, we'll have to definitely um, link that episode for those who are enjoying this episode to go check out after this. But for those who may not know who you are, Matt, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, tell them about all the, all the stuff that you've uh, done in the industry uh, throughout your career. Oh man. Um, <laughs> lifer in this industry, I tell you, I wasn't raised in it, but uh, it seems right as soon as I graduated from Butler, it, uh, I jumped right into this, this industry. Uh, I started off with the, with Delta faucet company, um, at their headquarters here in Indianapolis. That was my senior year internship. Uh, did that for a year, had a hiring freeze, right? It was the, the, the recession, all that fun stuff. So ended up moving. Um, my boss there ended up making a connection to a distributor here in the Midwest, Habager Corporation, where I went to be a, a territory a manager for the carrier brand. I uh, did that for a little bit and then ended up moving, moving on to go work at HVAC.com. Uh, in contractor commerce, as, as a lot of people know it uh, today. Uh, worked with Will there for, for a few years, helped build that business, specifically the e-commerce side up, and then ended up going to work for a contractor. So a, a smaller, about an $8 million contractor in Cincinnati and Lexington, um, about half and half split between revenue between the two locations, uh, doing their marketing and leading their sales team. After that, um, came back to Indiana where my wife and I's families are located, uh, get the kiddos back towards their, their grandparents, mm -hmm. uh, brought them back here. And we're, uh, I ended up being the vice president of marketing for a marketing agency here in Indianapolis that serves the home service industry, uh, valve and meter. Mm -hmm. And after, um, leaving there, ended up coming here to, uh, to max service group. So we have Williams comfort air, Mr. Plummer, um, Thomas and Galbraith in Cincinnati, Jarbo's in Louisville, and then recently Buckeye Heating and Cooling over in Columbus, Ohio. So we've got about 500 employees uh, and on a pretty good growth rate uh, just to, to be able to serve more people in the community. Yeah. Well, there, yeah, there, there's definitely a lot to peel back there. And, and you know, yeah. last, night, last time we chatted, I know we we definitely hit harder on the, uh, you know, some of the earlier phases in your career in the industry yeah. and, uh, and then even so on your background. So, um, you know, this time I really, I really want to dig in some on your experience on the agency side, and mm -hmm. then some of that stuff that you brought with you over to the contractor side. Yep. Yeah. This, uh, gosh, this the agency side. It's, it's just that's a completely different ball game. Uh, I, I got to say, in all transparency, I'm definitely more. Uh, I guess I'm designed to be more on the contractor side, where I can really dive deep right into the company. Uh, agencies absolutely serve their purpose within this space and, and where different companies are in their life cycle. Uh, but the, the, you know, from my perspective, I like it digging into the operations from marketing uh, capacity. I like digging into marketing even deeper, seeing how our teams are interacting with brands, see how the brands interacting with the community, this or that. And um, as some of that, there can sometimes be gaps, right? When you're working with an yeah. agency that may not, that, that isn't in-house. Um, yeah. so 
agency life was not necessarily for me, but learned so much. I had a great leader in Marsha Barnes um, yeah. and, and really learned a lot from her and, and just from a business perspective. She's got a tremendous background from a business perspective and uh, it really helped me grow as a leader, uh, helping lead teams, helping lead people, helping grow people. Uh, I learned I learned a lot from a lot of good people and, and was able to bring it here and, and, and transfer it to the contracting side of it. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, people ask me, what's the what's my number one thing that I that I've learned just throughout my career? And, and I'd say it's progress, not perfection. Uh, that one I've been trying to live more and more and more um, because we, we just need to constantly as marketers be getting new things out there, new, exciting things out there yeah. and then testing, testing if they work, if they don't shut them, move on. Let's find something else that does work. And um too often we let perfection get in the way where we want something to be absolutely perfect. And that's not always, that's not always obtainable and it just holds you back from the, from the greater good. Oh yeah. I, I you know, we say this a lot around here is to not get stuck in uh, like analysis paralysis with, you know, right. it, always going for perfectional stuff. I think it's good to always put, you know, quality first and your best foot yeah. forward. But you know, there does come a time when, especially like, you know, agency side, we're launching a website and, you get, you know, the team building it and us and we're kind of, right. you know, doing our thing. And then you get this stakeholder involved and that stakeholder involved. And it's like, next thing you know, we're like, guys, stop, just, just launch the damn thing. And yeah. like, let's see how it performs before we are AB testing right. stuff before it's even live. Right. Uh, like, let's, let's just launch it and see how it goes. Right. We can't hold ourselves back. That's what we end yeah. up doing. And it's like, we, we want to constantly be pushing it this industry is so unique in that we only have we only have the capacity we're given each day right mm -hmm. and if we're not maximizing that capacity if we're not trying new things to drive up that capacity uh then then we're failing mm -hmm. uh because we're never going to get that capacity back right yeah. so we've got a 100 percent. we got to be 100 percent capacity every single day and get being able to make sure our employees can provide for their families and themselves. Uh, and then that, making sure that we're able to serve as much of the community as possible. Um, we're a service-based company. We, we, we live to serve the community. Yeah. We, 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 we exist to serve our team. We exist to serve our clients. Uh, and we just, we just serve each other and we try to serve each other well. Yeah, absolutely. So, so kind of, you know, going back to the, to the agency side and to the yeah. contracting side. So what do you, th what do you think like the role should be for an agency provider for the con? I think it's, um, it, it's, it's unique in the fact, um, that using some internet, there we go. We got, oh, there we go. We got, <laughs> I imagine yeah. you'd end it with contractor. Do you want to restate the question? Yeah. So I, I just wondering what the agency's role should be for, you know, for the contractor, because I see a lot of agencies out there trying to almost solve too many problems outside of, you know, deploying the tactic and helping yep. achieve a certain strategy. Yeah, I think it totally depends on where the business is at. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's what you see. And it's specifically with our space, you fought, you see different agencies that serve different size clients better. Uh, mm -hmm. It it completely depends on where they, that is that contractor is in, in the life cycle of business. Right. Yeah. And, and you, so there are, there is an instance where they need to be in the entire marketing arm. There needs to be an instance where uh, they're helping them better understand their operations uh, because yeah. they may not be ready to bring on you know, a marketing strategist to come on. I mean, it's not cheap to, to bring on someone with, with a lot of experience and good experience. that's truly going to you know, move the business forward. That's not, that's not a cheap move. Um, impactful, but not cheap. Yeah. Um, and, and then, then you get to the point, you know, where we were a couple of years before, a couple of years ago, before we brought all of the marketing internal here, um, where we need, we really needed an agency to help us on the execution side of it. Um, yeah. and they helped as well in the, the idea of curation, helping me really define what the brand meant in, in market and in the messaging. And then we got to a point uh, in the business where it made sense then to start bringing in, bringing in internal team members. So, you know, we've essentially built out an agency inside of, of our contracting business. Yeah. What, what did that, what did that size look like before it, you know, fully got brought in house? Uh, we were, so we, 
we hit 85 million in revenue before we started bringing it bringing it all in house now it's critical way before that uh, i would say in your 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 you know 25 million probably i would say is where it really makes sense to bring in a strong marketing strategist um that's really then you know the goal the goal bringing me on board here was not for me to manage our ppc campaigns that that yeah. Hey, that wouldn't have worked out really well. I haven't managed PPC campaigns in years. However, I really know how PPC works uh, from a strategy perspective and how it's part of the overall marketing mix and how messaging needs to be curated and all that. So, um, you know, bringing in a, a true strategist that's really taking all these different things that um, you're doing in market, right? All these tactics that are being deployed in market and making sure we're bringing it in under one umbrella, one common message, one theme to really make sure that everything resonates and sticks with the consumer because you want to turn those consumers into clients. Yeah. Um, and, and that's a that's a big step when you're really looking at developing, truly developing a brand, not just doing marketing, but developing out a brand. Yeah. Yeah. I think that it's, it, it's kind of, it's like this sexy idea that contractors have in their head where it's like, you know, I'm going to bring it all in house. Um, but you know, when you're five, 10 million, you got to think like, it doesn't make sense because, no. you know, you know, you go to a dedicated agency who's got, you know, PPC specialists, SEO specialists, social mm -hmm. media specialists, and you're getting them for what you're getting them at. If you hire individual, you know, all those individually, right. you're going to quadruple your expenses. Yep. Plus, you still have to pay Google for the ad space, you know, and yep. for all that stuff. So it's definitely I think it's definitely good to understand, like. I completely agree. I think bringing in a good quality strategist to manage the vendor relationships first mm -hmm. is huge before bringing it in house. Right. I, it, it just, it makes total sense. And it does, it, it really, a lot of these decisions end up being, end up, end up being financial decisions, right? You end up getting to a point where your PPC you know, management fee, you could bring on someone that is talented. I'd say do not, do not switch out that fee to bring someone in that that's inexperienced um, because that, that's not going to, to work out any better. So the idea is get to a point where, you know, you have the 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 media management spend to really hire someone that understands um, PPC or any of your paid digital then bring it then bring it in house and help train them on the industry the you know how how clients interact with with brands in the space and everything of that nature that's that's then where it becomes important to have the strategist because that's that's my job right let me let me teach them the overall marketing strategy and how what we're trying to do as a company because i'm plugged into the operations right yeah. um, the marketing leader has to be involved in operations it it would abs it's asinine not to be uh, because mm -hmm. because marketing marketing relies so much on operations in order to be successful. If if we were not an absolute machine here operationally, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be a quarter of as good as at the job that I am. Uh, yeah. But but I recognize that, realize that, and also realize that's a marketing strength because that's what our why our con, our clients use us and love us is because of our client experience and the operations that we've developed. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree about marketing and operations, you know, working together because, um, you know, just mm -hmm. like, you know, operations, you know, relies on marketing the other way around too. Like if your capacity is mm -hmm. not there, then you shouldn't be flooding the internet with, you know, with lead gen, like you should or right. flooding your business with leads. Like, you know, we listen into, you know, several of our clients calls, you know, for Google ads, because we want to make sure that, you know, how the customer got to the company was appropriate, adjust the ad, stuff like that. And there was a particular client and we had noticed, you know, a lot of their booking rate had gone down through their paid digital. And I was like, well, right. what's, what's going on? Oh, well, we can't book them because we're four or five weeks out and these people are hanging up and calling someone else. I'm like, <laughs> we need to know that so that we can, you know, either dial back that campaign or, you know, adjust it somewhere else. But if you don't know those things, you could just be right. wasting your dollars so quickly. Yeah, I'm. I am very involved in each of our operation morning huddles. I mean, I, I probably end up taking an hour and a half 
of meeting time, just making sure that I'm that I'm involved in the operation huddle. But then right after the operation huddle is my marketing huddle with the team yeah. uh, so that, that we can then have the conversation. OK, here's where we're at operational. Here are some gaps that we have. We need to get some afternoon calls on the board or something of that nature. That's when we can then go, OK, what are the levers that we can pull that are more instant? Uh, that we're able to 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 drive more demand if needed, or can we can we schedule maintenance or this or that? Um, it's just it's absolutely critical, specifically when you get in of size, uh, to make sure that that you have alignment across the the business from that perspective. Yeah, absolutely. And so you, um, for the you know for the listener out there who may not have an in-house strategist because they're not to that mm-hmm. to that point yet. You know, what, what are some tips or advice that you would recommend for them in regards to managing their <laughs> agency um, yeah. partnership, like managing that relationship? Yeah. Hey, first, it's always a two way street. Right. Uh, I know I need to be held accountable and they need to be held accountable. And, and you have to be you have to be OK with the agency also holding you accountable. Uh, because if you're not, you're not going to learn from the, the insights that they're gathering from the marketing perspective. So we'll take we'll take that and put that aside. But when you're looking at, at really trying to find the ideal agency, um, there are a couple of things that I'd recommend. Always ask them for uh, client referrals that are of similar size. So there you get the operational component, but also ask them of similar plan types. So um, make sure that they, they that they're giving you a contractor that's the same size, so you know operationally good. But then also plan type, and what plan type I mean is is that they're they're using them for PPC, SEO, and investing similar amounts, so that you can get a really good gauge. Um, okay, how will this work within your business? Because you you can't just take their all star client because they may be in a diff- completely different space yeah. than than uh, you are as a business. So you, what your results and the expectations that you're going to come out of expecting are going to be completely unrealistic and yeah. maybe unobtainable until you you get the business to that point or operationally to that point. So I would highly recommend uh, recommend that and actually dial them and call them and, and, and understand and then go to their website. You know, Google gives us tools. You know, if, you, if you're a Chrome user, you can go into, you can go into the tool set and, and do a Google Lighthouse report um, on that on that clients of the agency's website and actually look at it and understand, okay, how does it perform from an SEO and technical side? Because a lot of agencies all create you a cool website, but if, the, uh, if it doesn't if it doesn't perform, why the hell do you even have it? Like, oh, cool, you have a cool website that no one visits. That's neat. Yeah. Like, pat yourself on the back. Like, okay. Yeah, absolutely. And, and there's even, yeah, like you said, there's so many free tools out there, like uh, small, absolutely. small SEO tools or something like that, small SEO checker, uh, that you yeah. can just drop a URL in and get a good understanding. Even SpyFu, like I don't like SpyFu for PPC, yep. but you can one time drop it in SpyFu and go to the, the SEO research uh, function of it's fairly accurate. And you can just get a good gauge of, you know, is it trending up or is it trending down for organic keywords, stuff like that. So right. Um, yeah, I definitely agree doing your due diligence there. Um, just because like you said, I, I could recommend if I'm talking to someone in Boston, I could say, Hey, call this contractor in Arizona where it's hot all year long and they're always busy. And they're going to say, Hey, I'm busy. Right. <laughs> or, you know, like someone that could be a $5 million contractor and refer them to someone who's a $25 million contractor. Right. Well, and, and you have so many agencies like, there are some really shady ones in this space and i'm i'm pretty outward against against them um uh, in communication and posts and all that stuff but yeah. listen if you do a shitty job i'm going to call you out that you're doing a shitty job like i'm yeah I, no problem with that <laughs> um but there are also good agencies that really a really do care and, and really really want to make a, an impact and do do solid work mm-hmm. um but a lot of agents, there are just a ton of agencies out there that just start up out of out of nothing, out of a click funnel campaign, and uh, they end up they end up building a business. And don't get me wrong, everyone needs to start somewhere, but they don't understand the technical SEO side of it. So they they don't understand that that the website has to perform from a speed perspective. Google has to be able to uh, crawl it cleanly. Our website may not be the sexiest, but it it performs well. Yeah. Um, and, and I, and I know when a client goes there, they're going to be able to, to find what they need and be able to navigate appropriately. And one of our most important clients, Google can yeah. also 
cleanly crawl that website and understand the site structure and everything that that entails. So um, do just do some of the back end work and run tests and understand and ask ask a shit ton of questions yeah. because because you deserve that. You're you're about to put one of the most important parts of your business being marketing. You're about to 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 give that to someone to run for you, and that can be scary, but it yeah. shouldn't if you have the right partner. Exactly. It, and this is, um, I've mentioned this in a, in a solo talk before it's, you're essentially building a digital house. And right. like when you're building a house, I've never built my own house before, but I understand how it works. You look for uh, home builders to build this. Mm -hmm. Now, would you want a home builder who's only good at siding or is only good at drywall or, you know, they, they've built other homes and it's, you know, the floors aren't level and, the roof's all sagging and it looks like junk or even worse, you build it on land you don't own. So then when you part ways, right. you lose the house. Um, yeah, I completely agree. There's, there's definitely a lot of, of due diligence that should go into it. Well, and I also, I also challenge agencies, know your role, right. And know what you're good at. Most agencies really carve, carve their, um, reputation on, on, on generally one thing specific, right. They become really good at that and that's how they're able to drive leads. Uh, to clients, and then that's how they get their reputation built up, and they they are they have figured out a way to scale it to some type of capacity. Mm -hmm. But understand what your strengths are. You, agencies don't always have to be everything to everyone. It yeah. doesn't. Like you can you can say, hey, you know what? I'm 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 good at this. I'm good at digital. I don't know shit about traditional. Like yeah, and that is completely fine. Or saying I'm a PPC only house. Cool. Thank you for telling me that. Yeah. But but make sure to get, you know be honest about it about it with clients. But then also understand where you're successful with with companies. Don't try to go get companies that. Uh, and when I say companies, I mean contractors. Don't go try to to reach agreements with contractors that you know really isn't your niche. That yeah. you you know you're probably not going to be the most successful with because just signing that contract doesn't mean shit long term. Because yeah. you you are going to piss off clients and they're going to tell all their friends and good Lord, if this industry is anything, it's everyone's connected and everyone tells everybody everything. So yeah. um, it, know that, own it and just do what you're good at. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And and even, you know, it pisses off the clients. They tell your friends, it also burns your team out. Right. If, if it's not a good fit, like nothing burns your team out quicker than a you know, client that's not a good fit. Um, so completely agree. And yeah, with all the, uh, the Facebook groups out there, I mean, there's one right. popping up every day with, 2000 members in it. It's like every single day there's a new group. Um, so yeah, they definitely, they definitely chat. So I've, I've learned that lesson the hard way. Even, you know, we've, we've lost a client before and it was a bad fit and I should have seen the red flags and I didn't. Right. Um, great guy, great company, wasn't a good fit for us. And right. so now there's more power in saying, no, this wouldn't be a good fit for us, but they might be a good fit for you. Um, right. Cause it's, yeah, it's, the you know the, the hassle that you have to go through if it's not a good fit is is much worse than you know just getting a quick contract signed right um so uh i lost my train of thought there for a second because i had a a good point on um on agencies oh okay questions to ask yeah. so I guess if you're listening to this, it's it's a Wednesday. So two weeks ago, I made a solo episode on questions you should ask agencies before you hire them. Um, I'd love to dig into a few of these and, and get your perspective on, you know, what your, your thoughts are on some of them. So um, in regards to like the website, when you're shopping around for a website provider, what are some good questions that you would recommend asking? Well, start off, do I own the damn thing? Um own own your freaking marketing assets like that that if there is something that that should just be known it's that right yeah and, and under truly understand if you do uh because that that is a difference maker last thing you want to do is to terminate a relationship and they also terminate your website because there goes everything you worked for throughout the entire length of that agreement mm -hmm. um even if it wasn't much um so I, I that that is always an important part. Also, I love understanding when things don't work. Like, and I and I love when when agencies are very transparent with me and listen. Hey, here's an instance where it didn't work. Uh, here's an instance where we launched a website and it didn't perform as well as we thought it was. Here's what we did. We did diagnosis of it. Here's what we learned. Here's what we implemented to make it better. Um, you know, because they they should be doing deep dives if they really 
care about their clients. If they lose someone, they should be doing a deep dive to understand why they lost them. And then if it was performance, understand why the performance wasn't there and and, and enact things to make things better. Uh, but And then websites, just you know, what investments do you make? If it's website specific, like what investments do you make um, to, to make sure your developers are, are up on the latest trends, not only from a UX perspective, but a technical SEO perspective, because that is a big difference maker. There's a lot of front end developers that are able to create some really, like I said before, some really, really cool looking websites, but they don't perform well. They, they, they lag so bad on, on speed or mm -hmm. You know, they, they didn't look at the color contrast. So Google's going to dock them because it doesn't think a consumer can actually really read that website if they have if they have any seeing disability or anything of that yeah. nature. So so th there are so many things like that that they just need to you, you just need to ask and, yeah. and just dive down and dive deep into the, the into the questions and the feedback they're giving. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And especially in an industry where so many people use red and blue. That yeah. contrast thing, I see it all the time. Like, yeah, red, red background, blue text, or vice versa, and it just like it's. I don't have a seeing disorder or anything, and it stuns my eyes. And I'm just like, geez. Um, right. So yeah, I completely agree on that for sure. Um, in regards to PPC, yeah, uh, what are some some good questions to ask there? Because I know there's a lot of different methodologies around that. What's your return on ad spend? I mean, that, that's the one at the end of the day. Um, if I wanted to be at the very high level and from my perspective, at the end of the day, I don't care how you get the leads. I, I want to know, do those leads turn into revenue? And what are you seeing commonly from a return on ad spend perspective? Because that, that is at the end of the day, only thing that matters for both that agency and yourself, yeah. because that agency should be judged on the, the revenue that they're, they're driving. Uh, but understanding just kind of what their, their strategy is and how, and probably more importantly, because these are paid lead channels understanding how they're going to become involved on the operation side of the business. I know I've, I mm -hmm. keep harping on it, right? I keep bringing up yeah. operations like the, Absolutely. Damn, this is a marketing podcast, but uh, your marketing is only going to be as, as effective as your operations. So um, there needs to be some tie into that marketing team into your operations so that they know what your capacity is and what you need, what, where you're struggling, what you need to improve on. And this isn't a monthly owner call. I'm sorry. Uh, I know that's what a lot of agencies will do is a monthly touch base with owners, but there needs to be some simple way that that a client and, a, and an agency can communicate on a daily basis just to be able to say, hey, here's where we're at. Because like you said, you could be wasting through spend because they're booked out for three weeks. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe maybe it doesn't make sense to be spending now. Let's hold that spend and let's let's invest it where at a time where we may have a higher cost per acquisition or, or something of that nature. Um, so just being able to create some sort of method of of communication uh, that everyone's on the same page of of what's really needed for the business at that time. Yeah. So what what are your thoughts between uh, ad spend? Mm -hmm. uh, percentage uh, fee versus flat rate management fee for a PPC. I hate, I hate the percentage. I I hate percent of ad spend. You're telling me you're going to increase the work that you're putting into the account equal to what I spend each time. So if I double my ad spend, you're going to put twice as much work into that account. Just doesn't make sense to me. I know how PPC is ran, and that's not the case. It's a budget and it's updating the budget. And yeah, there may be so you may be playing around with some different campaigns, this or that, or expanding into new ones, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that double the work's being put in. I like I like negotiating onto a retainer basis, just saying, hey, um, you know, if you're gonna manage PPC for me, I'm willing to pay you this flat fee a month for it. Um, listen, if I if I spend less with you, it doesn't mean I'm gonna pay you less. This is I am I am having a fixed marketing cost with you. Uh, and then if I spend more, we, we, we spend more, like it's yeah. change, It's altering the budget. It's driving, um, you know, it, it's driving more leads to the business. And I think for the most part, most companies, um, that are working with agencies should be able to be in that type of, of retainer type model. Um, because it's not like you're going to get to a point where, you know, we buy a lot, a lot of leads from Google, right? We spend a, lot of money on PPC each each day. Now, 
ours is a little bit more complex because we constantly we've gotten to the size where we've got to constantly be looking for new leads, new ways. So we're we're always launching new new tests or, or new campaigns to be able to see how we can drive drive more leads to the business. But most companies um, they have general campaigns and hell, most companies can just operate off of a branded campaign with what they're spending on PPC. So, uh, yeah. so yeah, retainer, retainer is the way that I always highly recommend. Um, I'm just not a big fan of percent. I'm just not. Yeah. yeah. yeah Sorry I, if you are. I, no, no, no. I, I agree with you. I, I used to be, cause that's what I always thought, you know, when we first were right. starting off, that's, that's the way that I think it kind of was. And I think right. I see more and more people moving towards that for many reasons. One, it's way easier to predict expenses on both parties yeah. half like yeah. it's, it's way easier to, to predict that and also like i think the percentage for me at least like that kind of creates like a billing nightmare so it's like oh you spent more so now we got to adjust how much you pay us it's like no it's i like the i'm becoming more and more of a fan of, of the flat rate retainers we've actually right. got quite a few that have moved that too for sure especially lsa because you like lsa like it's got to be flat rate retainer in my opinion because you know you could set your budget to a hundred thousand dollars a week and if you're running a 20 percent right. fee on that you're gonna and they only spend two grand on that lsa account well then you're making more money than they're spending right well and there's there's not really many things that you can do to yeah just lsa toggle right? a few things over oh look we don't want to clean ducks this month right <laughs> <With the> toggle <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, sweet. Yeah. So definitely I, I agree with you on, on both of those, on those points for sure. Um, for SEO, um, just what, what are your thoughts on, on SEO? Cause there's a, there's a lot of people out there that offer SEO. Um, so what are some questions that you think contractors should ask smart contractors should ask their agencies when they're vetting them out for SEO? Yeah, this is where a lot of agencies suck. They just they don't they don't understand it. And they're like, oh, I've read some blogs on Search Engine Land that told me to create content. Well, that's that's fucking great. Uh, <laughs> but we're, we're probably going to need to do some internal linking structures, right? We're probably going to need to do a backlink strategy. We're probably there are so many different things that you need to do once you have content and optimizing that content. Like it takes a lot of work. We invest a lot of time. Uh, not only in content, but just in SEO in general. I mean, we 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 have a developer that spends a lot of hours just just focused on the website, and making sure we're constantly optimizing for the new WordPress updates, uh, making sure that we're constantly running scans within Lighthouse and, and the different tools to be able to make sure that the websites are performing in an, in an optimum way. Um, and but it's not just launching a new a new service page. There's so much more from an SEO perspective that goes into it than just that. Like, and, and, but you've got, there are agencies that just bamboozle people because it's like, mm -hmm. oh, hey, here, we, we launched a new, um, a new service page or we launched a new location page, but you don't know. And, and to be honest, most, most contractors don't understand you know what really needs to go behind it and they shouldn't right they need to be running right. a business right exactly that um that's why they that's why they hire you as as an agency or or me as an internal marketer within the trades that that's our purpose within the organization yeah but from an seo i mean that's that's a tough one i i always want to see i want to see examples of where they worked with a contractor and a couple of different metrics I'd like to see. I'd like a snapshot year over year, prior 30, 60, and 90 um, of organic segmented traffic. So go into analytics and segment it down to organic. Now, if if that looks a little fishy, all right, let's go another, let's go another step and let's then look at it from a local perspective. So down to the state. And then you can go down to even the, the city or the metro level to be understand understanding okay. Yeah, they, they grew traffic, but some of it may have been evergreen. Evergreen content serves its purpose. I love when one of our major blogs outrank Yelp. I yeah. freaking love it, mainly because I Yelp and I have a, a love-hate relationship. <laughs> um, yeah. But I, I love it because we're able to really go into to, to, to be able to get a lot of traffic. Like you would you would be amazed when they had the freezing in um, when they had the freezing in Texas, right? 
what what contractor in Texas is going to be targeting keywords for frozen pipes? They don't do that there. So when it did do that there, they went people were searching and our content on on our plumbing pages went through the roof because we were so we were ranked well for like different frozen keywords mm-hmm. um, that we just started getting a massive amount of content and the spikes organically we were insane. Um, but you know, that, that traffic there does gain some credibility there, but back to the original question, just getting, getting into some of the data and data and seeing the examples. I see too many agencies that will just show, okay, here's your website traffic, but they're doing a lot of display campaigns Yeah, that don't convert worth of shit. Yeah. Oh, and another thing is, um, and I shared this on, uh, Crystal Williams podcast from, um, lemon seed podcast yeah um crystal school yeah she's awesome man and um i was sharing so many agencies they share month over month data and i'm like no 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 like june is naturally going to be hotter than may so more right. people are going to be searching in june july is going to be hotter than june august is going to be hotter than july you need to see june this year year over year to june last year may this year from may last year like it, it has always got to be year over year in a seasonal you know business where it's weather dependent um so I, I completely agree with you there. And I, I even said the same thing in the solo episode. I was like, as a contractor, you don't need to know the ins and outs of SEO, but you do need to understand right. what to be looking for. And so thank you for making me not look bad. Um, <laughs> no, you're good, dude. There's just a lot of things that, that that agencies could do to really make it look like they're driving you a lot of traffic when they're when they're not the ones responsible for it or, or you're paying for for garbage display traffic that, that means nothing. Like, yeah. No, thank you. And make, oh gosh, oh, make sure in analytics that whatever agency you're working with sets up your conversion goals mm-hmm. and make sure it's for phone and form and that's it. Don't let them put, oh, well, if I, if, I, if they, uh, if they, they marked for this, we need to mark that as a conversion goal. That's not a conversion goal. Your conversions that matter are what drives leads to your business, not a contact yeah. us form, not a, not a, a contact the president or anything of that form. No, your conversion goals are schedule maintenance, schedule service. I need a new system, right? Those yeah. are your conversion forms. Get them tracked. Yeah. And phone numbers. That's enough. Yeah. And then also um, like IP exclusions because the agency oh, yeah. agency is going to be sitting there all day working on your website. So, you know, and they'll be searching and clicking yep. and doing all this stuff. Like it's, it's, it's funny to me or it's like, is do they have their IP address, you know, marked out? Cause the second you do, you're like, why did the traffic drop? It's like, well, well and, and <laughs> yours, right. As a contractor, the contractor's IP address. Yeah. Like I put all, I put all of our IP addresses for all of our locations. I put them in Google analytics so that, that those are, those are filtered out agencies. I get there, I get theirs, put it in there too. I even put my home address in there just mm-hmm. because I know that I'm going to be obsessing over, over the website, <laughs> yeah. checking things out at home. And yeah. um, so I, 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 I know my weaknesses, um, <laughs> but just get those in there because at the end of the day, I don't care if the, I don't care if the news is great or if it's absolutely terrible. I just want true news, right? I, I just want to know what the real results are so I can make a decision because we're, you're going to see, you're going to see peaks, you're going to see valleys, but it's the decisions you make within both of those that's what's going to make you a better marketer and a better company. Absolutely. Well, I, I, I think this was, this was all great stuff. Um, it, there's one, there's one other topic I wanted to hit for sure before we, before we get off of here is uh, community marketing, which is yeah. you know, we're taking a huge left turn. But um, if there's, if there's one person that I wanted to ever talk to about community marketing, it's you because, you know, we're friends on Facebook and I, I follow y'all's pages on Facebook and I, I love to see what you guys are doing. So let's talk about that for a minute. What have you guys been up to? Man, um, I, get, I, I love talking about this topic and I really have a lot of, a lot of credit to the, the agency that we had before we brought everything internal. Um, Kelly and Brand Story Experts, he, he and I had lots of conversations around these and I, I really enjoyed them. And it, it just really got my my interest and drive growing within how, how contractors need to be doing this better um, and celebrating it. So we, we exist, we're in the home service industry. 
that that middle word service is very purposeful and very meaningful. We are here to serve each other. We are here to serve uh, our clients, the community as as a whole. We're here to serve. And, and we have to take that incredibly, incredibly serious, right? Because A, that helps with internal, the retention, right? We got to serve, serve our internal clients. We've got to serve our external clients. And then we got to serve the community. That community portion of it, um, I think a lot of people miss on. And, and, and a lot of people also are doing a lot better at it than they think, but they're not celebrating and telling the story. When you're, when you're looking at community marketing, it's not, you're not being boastful. You're approaching it from a genuine, humble way uh, right. in which you you are really trying to genuinely grow, help the organization that you're serving grow. So we we post about the the um, donations that we make within the community. We have a 12 month community giving calendar. Um, everything that we do is planned and it's purposeful because we want to make sure that in our minds and our hearts, it's also purposeful, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, when you, when you offer to, to do a donation to, to a charity, let's think about that, right? Because is it more impactful for you just to, to go present a check or is it more impactful for you, uh, to run Facebook ads for them on your page, um, with a, a dedicated link to their website saying, um, for, uh, matches. So every, every donation we make, unless it's like a one-off of baseball team or something of that nature, yeah. which we do of. Uh, but if it's, if it's, if it's truly like one of our monthly matches for, uh, any of our locations, we, we set it as a match campaign because what's better, what's better than $2,000 is $4,000, mm -hmm. right? So, so utilize your, activate your community that you've created as a business, whether it be your team members or also your clients, uh, activate them to be able to, to help the help the community as well. Because if you're approaching it genuinely, you really don't care what you're getting back out of it. But if you're, if you're doing purposeful good within the community, everything's going to be all right. Like, like, yeah, it is going to be good because people will see that you're being genuine in their approach. It's, it's not, you're not doing marketing for your, yourself. You're doing marketing for the community, um, the community organization that, that you're supporting. And these folks don't have marketing dollars. They don't, yeah. they just don't. They're trying, they're trying to take as much of their money and put it into the cause as possible. Work with local organizations. That's all we work with. We don't work with large national, um, groups, not saying they're bad, but be, we rather invest the dollars where we know it's going to be reinvested into the local communities. Those folks that we serve, that we that that we pass on the road every day, that we live next to in the community every single day. Those are the folks we want to help. Um, but help those organizations tell the story. If they don't have marketing, you do. You have a captive audience on social media. You have a captive audience on your email newsletter. Use those to tell their story and help help strengthen their ability to serve the community. Um, and, the, and then figure out ways how you can how you can leverage relationships that you have with your with uh, your distributors or, or whomever to see, okay, hey, would you guys like to come alongside us here and and um, you know install a, install a system uh, for a family in need? Mm -hmm. um, right now, we're doing a family in need uh, HVAC giveaway in each one of our in each one of our markets, and the stories that you get from that are absolutely heart wrenching. Um, you you really get a genuine appreciation for what people are probably going through that you don't know are going through problems and and you you get to understand that what you do as a company matters a lot a hell of a lot more than you even think um yeah. and, and that means a lot and tell that story to your internal team so send an email to your team letting them know the things that you're that you're doing in the community so they can either volunteer and come alongside them um or help donate or or, or whatever um just spread spread the word uh, the good word is as, as much as you can uh, to be able to be a positive impact on the community. Absolutely. Well, that's, yeah, that's definitely, um, <clears throat> that's definitely good stuff. I, I think a lot of people should, you know, try to get more involved in ways that are community centric and not just, well, if, you know, if I go out there and look like I'm involved, people will think of me more often when they need wow. service. Um, so I completely agree. And, and I, I, I challenge our listeners out there to, 
to do this with uh, with a heart of giving and not you know a heart of if I do this then I'll get that. Um, no, do it, a give, heart. What yeah, we have. Give, yeah, give give without expecting anything in return, and and you know like you said everything will will be all right and turn out good for you. Absolutely. Sweet. Well, Matt, uh, this has been this has been a great episode uh, per usual. Um, I honestly, I could sit on here for, for probably two or three hours and chat with you for sure. So, um, you know, before, before we, uh, sound off, you know, what, what's some, some final tips or or tricks that you would recommend for contractors listening to this? Uh, dig in, understand your marketing, but also understand your operations and how they can work better together. Um, also have, have a good relationship with, with your agency or any, really any business partner for that matter. Um, because it, it's a, it's a very much a two-way street and it needs to be a two-way street. Um, and relationships still do matter in this space. And, um, when you need something urgent that, or maybe be like, Hmm, that's a, that's a quick turn or, or something of that nature, that goodwill that you, you build through a relationship is going to go a long way. So always foster those and, and invest in those. Um, and then from a community perspective, just, just serve and serve well. And, and everything else will, will fall into place. Absolutely. Well, thanks again, everyone, for tuning in to another episode of the Smart HVAC Marketing Podcast. Again, uh, Matt, I'm not sure if you knew this, but we recently won a communicator award for the podcast. So oh, cool. Uh, to, yeah, I want to re- again say thank you to everyone who listens. Thank you to all of our incredible guests because – there's no way I could have possibly won an award because I don't ever do the talking. I just kind of guide the conversation. So thanks again to all of our guests and thank you to everyone that listens. Um, it was pretty cool little honor. And um, yeah. So Matt, thank you so much for taking My some pleasure. time out of your day to chat with me and uh, we will be talking with you soon. Awesome. We'll talk soon. All right. Bye.